The name of our program is ETGSW. ETGSW is an acronym that stands for Escape to Gain Safety for Women. It is also giving you your targets, eyes, throat, groin, shin, and the use of improvised and edge weapons. Our whole program is very easy, easily learned. There's no more than eight moves. So it's something that you don't have to train all the time. It's something that you don't have to memorize. It's something that can easily be learned, whether you're a young girl, all the way up to being a grandmother, and everybody in between. These are the survival strategies that we teach our operatives that are out in the field from our many different agencies. Now, before we get into this, uh, the way I want you to picture this is like you have a radar detection system. Okay? It's a radar detection system with these rings. Now, the greatest radar and the greatest uh, distance that you have between you and your opponent is where you have the greatest advantage. So the first ring that I want you to think of is going to be your situational awareness ring. What is happening around you? What is happening in the environment? Who is around you? What kind of a bus are you getting on? Which alley are you walking through? These are the awareness aspects that you need to really take a look at. Are you busy on the phone, carrying your groceries, and running, rushing from one place to another? Well, if you are, then you're going to be spotted as a victim. You're going to be spotted as prey by those people that are hunting you. Those people that walk with their head up, held up high, don't have anything in their hands, are assertive as to what is happening out there, the body language that they portray, those are the people that are less likely to be victimized. If we look into the animal kingdom, the, 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 the hunter always prays for those that are the weakest, those that are the most unaware, those that are the sickliest. So just by having a better attitude, by being more aware of your surroundings, by making sure your hands are free, by making sure that you don't take shortcuts like going through the dark alley because it gets you home faster. Things like making sure that when you go from one place to another place that your hands are free, you're knowing what's happening around you. Now the two things I want you to focus on is your environment. What's happening? Is it lit? Is there people around? Where are you getting on? Are you getting on a bus where there's nobody? Do you see things of that nature that are alarming to you? We have a natural defense system inside of us that alerts us to danger. But if we're not present in the moment and we're preoccupied with what's happening and really busy with the way life gets us, it's very difficult for us to be aware and use those six senses to alert us to dangers that are there. So the first range that I want you to think of is your radius, this big large radius around you, imagine like 50 feet radius going all the way around you. And in that 50 feet, what is happening? Who is there at all times? Now in malls and so on, shopping malls, people come a lot closer to you, it's a little different. But it's a general idea, it's a general rule, okay? We have not gotten into a situation where somebody's put their hands on you. You have not gotten into a situation yet where somebody's in a range where they can grab a hold of you. So the idea is that before this happens, we want to intercept this situation. And the only way we can do that is if we're aware. That's the most important thing. And we have a whole video on situational awareness that I would like you to view on our website. So one of the ranges of combat that I would like to discuss with you is uh, the usage and deployment of weapons. Some of you may carry a weapon on you, uh, uh, a blade, uh, some pepper spray, um, and different utensils, a pen, a, a palm stick, things of that nature. So the idea is that you have to be aware of when you're able to pull it, what the situation is, and what is it involving. And making sure that you're loud and clear to the people around you, so not only the attacker coming to you, but the witnesses around you that are watching the situation are also seeing what is happening to make sure that you're voicing your opinion, that you're asserting, stop, stop, wait, do not come forward. I will use a weapon, I have a knife, I have a stick. Some of you carry a gun. That's the idea. The idea is not to kill somebody. The idea is to make sure that you stop them and you have given them a choice, that everybody around you is seeing what is happening. There's a force continuum that we teach martial artists and uh, police officers out there, that you have to be able to injure to the degree of the force being exerted upon you. If somebody is coming up to you and asking you the time of day, Pulling out a knife and sticking them would probably not be of any benefit to you or them. So at the end of the day, what we have to do is be aware that if you do have a weapon, if you do have a blade, how you deploy it is very important. It cannot be down in the bottom of your purse, so it's difficult to get access to. Now the second thing is that once you have a weapon, if you have a blade with you, if you have pepper spray with you, it's easily accessible. But once it's easily accessible, it's very important for you to communicate. Communicate. This is the empowerment. Stop. Because the name of our program is Escape to Gain Safety. You are trying to escape this situation so that you can gain safety. But you do not want to wait for the attack to happen to you and then go to your weapon and then try to get it because it's too late.
If you do not have a weapon on you in a situation, if you do not carry self-defense tools like pepper spray, uh, a, a short blade, uh, a pocket stick, you know, many others out there. Some women even carry handguns, depending on where they're, where, which state they're located in, and their accessibility to them. It's important that you know that there are weapons around you at all times that you can use as improvised weapons. A lot of women like to wear heels. The heels, take the heel off. We're going to be showing you how you can use your heels to turn them into a weapon. Improvised weapons is anything you pick up, anything that you can get in your hand to use, to help use as an equalizer, to help uh, bridge the gap between the larger person, the larger attacker. Because at the end of the day, somebody smaller most likely is not going to be attacking you. And if you're a woman, it's going to probably be a larger man or a larger woman coming at you. So the idea is that we have to be able to know what's around us. Once again, coming from the situational awareness portion, what are the available weapons that are there for us that we can utilize? I will now cover some of these techniques and drills that we can do. Um, very simple stuff. And what, what the goal is, I will also give you a drill that you can go home and practice. And these things, much like driving a car, are not that difficult to do and not very uh, hard to learn. But it's important that you do know it. You go through driver safety, don't you? So it's important that you also take time to go through your own personal safety, to empower yourself so that these types of things, if they do happen, you have an idea of what to do. You see, the biggest thing that happens is panic. And panic comes from not knowing what to do and losing track of your breathing. These are the stresses that come on you. So we will also focus and teach you some breathing methods that will help you relax in that moment that are very simple. And then they can also be translated, transferred over to the rest of your life and the different things you do. So our first technique is going to be defanging the snake. Um, what we're going to do for the purpose of this video is show you the usage of this drill, training drill and technique and strategy uh, with the use of a blade. You can then take this same strategy, pick up anything in your hand and use it that way. You can even fold up a magazine if you're on a plane, you can use a pen, you can use, uh, tear off the antenna, you can break a bottle, break a glass. Anything that comes in your hand can be utilized as a weapon so that you can once again escape to gain safety. Now, defanging the snake, the reason it works is you're not trying to take this weapon and go into the mass body, into the, into the, the guts, into the head. Those types of things involve you to really get close to the, the opponent or the attacker. So what I would like you to do in this drill that we're going to showcase, I'm going to bring out some of my students, is that we're going to teach you how to use some footwork and timing and usage of space to be able to move and hit the hand. Move and hit the hand. So you will learn the technique of defanging the snake, and then you will learn a simple drill that you can do at home to practice this. Um, I, may, I suggest that you use something soft, um, any kind of a soft stick, roll up a, a magazine, roll up a paper to practice this, pick up a shoe. Anything can be done just for practice. Don't do it, take a real blade and try to cut somebody. It won't be, once again, beneficial for you. Now, dealing with weapons, our strategy is going to be called defanging the snake. Defanging the snake is where we hit whatever's coming at us, okay? This person can be armed or unarmed. But it's very important when you're deploying a weapon that you are clearly communicating, not only to your opponent, your attacker, but also everybody around you what is happening. And this is where your expression of your inner energy has to come out, where you are asserting to the person, the person coming to violate you, that you are not going to allow this to happen. Okay, so it's very important. No, stop, do not come forward. Stop, I have a weapon, I'm armed, and I'm willing to use it. Stop, these types of uh, verbal cues are very important because they're alerting the uh, attacker that you are not gonna just stand by and be attacked, but most importantly, you're also letting everybody know around you what is happening. I would now like to demonstrate uh, defanging the snake, what it looks like, and how you will train it at home. Um, the most important thing is how you hold the blade, how you hold this weapon. Now I will teach you defanging the snake with the usage of a simple knife. You can then use this exact same strategy with anything, any type of weapon you pick up. Whether it be a heel, whether it be a newspaper, whether it be a stick, a pot, a pan, a tennis racket, a broken glass, a bottle, beer bottle, anything you can get your hands on to help extend your reach to cause a little bit of pain. Once again, we're trying to cause the pain on impact so that we can escape to gain safety. We're not waiting for this person to come really up close to us and grab a hold of us and then deploy the blade. In weapons, is your range that's outside of your kicking range. So this is when the person has not gotten too close to you. Okay, so Rocky, come on out please. 
Now, if you notice, at this distance where Rocky is, it's important that I don't let him come very close to me, come on forward, and get up right into the here, and now he's gra grabbed a hold of my weapon, and I can't really utilize it, okay? So right from here, as you notice, as he goes to grab, all I do is my weapon is pointing at his hand, it's just like a flashlight, you see this? It's like a flashlight. So Rock, just move your hand around like this. So you see, if he's moving his hand around like that, I'm just using the tip of my blade as a flashlight to illuminate. I don't have my hand out here, I don't have it back here, I don't have the blade holding it like this, you only see that in the movies, okay? I want it like this, just like a flashlight illuminating his hand. So the first drill I want you to do is that as Rocky moves one hand or the other hand, I illuminate where the hand is with the tip of my blade. As he steps forward, I am going to step back and instantly cut the hand. Very simple, just a quick backhand shot. If he comes with the other hand, I step back and I, kick the, I cut the hand. If he comes with both hands, I pick one hand and cut the hand. You see, this strategy is very simple to employ. It doesn't matter which way they're going to come. You use their blade, point at the hand, illuminate it, and cut the hand. This is defanging the snake. I'm not trying to go for his throat, go for his head, go for his body. Because if you see that scenario, he gets too close to me, and then I can't use my weapon properly to escape, to gain safety. Now the second scenario in defanging the snake is if my uh, attacker is also armed. So for the purpose of this demonstration, he's going to be carrying a knife, and I have a knife. Nothing changes. There is no part of this that's going to change. Rocky, please come on in. Now, as he's got the knife in his hand, that is my target, okay? Not his head, not his legs, not his body. When he goes out to extend that blade to come to me in a thrusting manner or in a slicing manner, Okay? My job is exactly the same. I keep my blade illuminated right onto his weapon hand, and as he goes to reach out, I step and I cut the hand. This is defanging the snake. Now as I'm in my ready stance here, I've illuminated my blade, and it might, my, my blade is much like a flashlight. Okay? It's following his hand. This is your first drill. Okay, so my partner here is just doing forehand slices, backhand slashes, and thrusts. And what I'm doing without any movement here is just watching the blade and illuminating. Now, the moment he decides to encroach into my space, I step off, step back using some footwork. It's called zoning away, so that my body and my vital parts are protected, and I reach and I cut his hand. So if he gives me a forehand strike, boom, I cut the hand. The moment I cut the hand, the pain is so instantaneous. All the simple little tendons that are in your hand get cut and severed. Instantly, the person drops the weapon. Now, when they drop the weapon, it gives me an opportunity to escape to gain safety. Okay. Now, he can give me a backhand shot, and I do the same thing, and I cut the hand. He can give me a thrust, and I can cut the hand. Okay. This is very important. This is called defanging the snake. So, recap. Illuminate the weapon hand, okay, with your blade, much like a flashlight. When they step forward to you with either a forehand, a backhand strike, or a thrust, you zone away and you cut the hand. You cut the hand, you cause the pain, and you run. I will now call two of my students up to demonstrate this. This is how you can go home and train this drill. Um, the person that is feeding it, put on a boxing glove, put on something on your hand so you can actually feel what it's like to cut it. If you just do things in the air, it's not real. You don't feel what the impact is like. So it's very important that you train the way you would defend yourself and you defend yourself the way you would train. Stop! Stay where you are. I have a weapon. Stop! Stay! Stay! Stop! Stay where you are. No! Don't come any closer. Stop! Stop! Stay where you are. Stop, stop, stay where you are. No! 